hypertensive patient, you need to keep the blood pressure more so as to maintain the perfusion in the ischemic zone. If you bring down the blood pressure rapidly, the blood pressure, the perfusion in the ischemic zone, the zone which is not yet infected, the blood pressure there will go down and then that part will become infected. So don't bring down the blood pressure in an ischemic stroke patient. So what are the goals? Patients who are to be treated with thrombolytic therapy, the goal is just to below, bring down the blood pressure below 185-510. Suppose the blood pressure is say 185-105. Don't bring down the blood pressure for the next 24 hours. Don't give any antipotency. Suppose the patient is not a candidate for thrombolysis. Patient is beyond thrombolytic, uh, uh, beyond the uh, window period. Then don't bring down the blood pressure below. If the blood pressure is 210, 120, don't treat the patient, blood pressure. Don't treat it in ischemic stroke. But it is not the case with hemorrhagic stroke. So treat blood pressure so that systolic blood pressure is below 185 and diastolic blood pressure is 110 below. And for next 24 hours post thrombolysis, maintain the blood pressure at or below 180 by 105. No lower goal has been given, but if patient is Hypertensive, don't bring the blood pressure below 180, 105. If it, is, if it stays there, well and good. Nothing will happen to the patient. So, uh, patient otherwise eligible for acute reperfusion therapy except that blood pressure is more than 185 by 110. The drug of choice is Lagatala because that is the only drug which is available in India. Nicardipine is not available. However, in few cases, you can try hydrolyzing and enalapilate. I regularly use enalapilate in many of my patients who are not responding to lactolol. And post thrombolysis, if you want to maintain the blood pressure at that particular level, you can give continuous infusion of lactolol. Maybe say uh, at a rate of 2 to 8 milligram per minute. Nicardipine is not available. If you are not able to maintain, you have thrombolyzed the patient, if you are not able to maintain the blood pressure below that particular level, you can use sodium nitroprusside. But then there are problems with sodium nitroprusside itself. It can precipitously bring down the blood pressure. So patients who are not treated with thrombolytic therapy, I have already told you that should not, blood pressure should not be treated acutely unless the systolic blood pressure is more than 220 or diastolic blood pressure is more than 120 for first 24 hours. Or if the patient has got active ischemic coronary artery disease or patient has got heart failure, aortic dissection, hypertensive encephalopathy or preeclampsia. Otherwise don't bring down the blood pressure. And when treatment is indicated, the cautious lowering of blood pressure not more than 15% in first 24 hours is indicated. Say your blood pressure is say 220 and if you want to bring down the blood pressure, patient is not a candidate for thrombolytic therapy. Don't bring down by more than 15%. That is 30-35 mm of LG of systolic blood pressure in first 24 hours. So coming to important part, reperfusion therapy. What is the goal? Immediate goal is to restore the blood flow to the region which are ischemic but not infected. That is the immediate goal. And what is the long term goal? To improve the outcome by reducing stroke related disability and mortality. The main goal is to reduce disability. The patient should be on rank, modified ranking score, score 0 to 1, not more than that. And what is successful reperfusion? How you can achieve the successful reperfusion? Early treatment, selection of appropriate candidate based on neurological evaluation and neuroimaging study, and coordinated approach between the team, code fasting. Sir has told you about code pulmonary embolism or pulmonary embolism team, the same thing is here. So I have ER consultant, intensive care, neurology, interventional neuroradiologist and neurosurgeon in your team. What is the eligibility criteria for thrombolysis with RTPA? Clinical diagnosis of ischemic stroke causing major label neurological deficit. On CT you have already ruled out hemorrhage. Now there is clinical diagnosis of ischemic stroke causing major able neurological deficit. It should be major. The onset time is less than four and a half hours before beginning the treatment. If the exact time of stroke onset is not known, it is defined as the last time the patient was known to be normal or at neurological baseline and age more than 18 years. So this is better. 
How do you prepare for intravenous thrombolysis? The diagnosis. Treatment should start within four and a half hours. There should be persistent, measurable, disabling neurological deficit. Persistent. If patient has got TI, patient may improve within 24 hours. You don't know whether patient has got TI. Many times it is possible. The TI definition tells you that patient can recover within 24 hours. So if patient has got TI, many times we might thrombolyze such patients who may be having simple TI. Eligibility criteria are made. Serum, serum glucose I have already 